Hello, Trig student. This video talks about, for Math 142, Pre-Calculus Trigonometry, the concept of vectors. And a vector is a mathematical construction to represent anything that has both magnitude and direction. What are some examples with magnitude and direction? Well, here's one. Here's a typical trig teacher and a typical trig student enjoying each other in class. Now the trig teacher might ask a question like, what is the sine of pi over three? Well, of course, all the trig students watching this video know the answer to that question. But this trig student might say, gee, I don't know. Now, how is the trig teacher going to respond? Well, hopefully you have a patient trig teacher, but suppose that you don't. It could be that this trig teacher gets angry and pushes this table into the trig student. Oh, that would be bad. But if that happened, the trig teacher would be applying a force. A force is an example of a quantity that has a magnitude and a direction. Another perhaps less violent example might be the notion of a kite in the air. If you have a kite in the air, it is being pushed by the wind. And the wind has a certain magnitude and direction. Hopefully, the wind is moving up and not too strongly so that you can hold on to your kite. Or think about water falling down a waterfall. It might be going at a certain speed. That speed could represent the magnitude of the vector. And of course, it is going in a certain direction. Now, because vectors are such an important topic, we like to have two ways to look at vectors, the first geometrically and the second algebraically. So let's define a vector. A vector is any quantity that has magnitude and direction. So because it has a magnitude and direction, we represent it with an arrow or sometimes what is called a directed line segment. For example, we might use this arrow here. This arrow we would call vector u. Notice the arrow above the u. I'll use that in class to indicate that, yes, we want to represent this as a vector. This also could be represented as a vector. It is the vector p and q, where p is the starting point, sometimes called the initial point, and q is the ending point, sometimes called the terminal point, or we sometimes call p the tail and q the head of the vector, and we represent this as pq. Now that is very different than qp, which might look like this. Notice that helps us indicate the direction of our vector. So we call this vector pq, or sometimes give it a letter representation of u. The initial point of the vector is p, or this is sometimes called tail. The terminal point is q, and this is sometimes called the head. We can add or subtract vectors geometrically by using what is called the parallelogram or the triangle method. OK, let me give you an example. Let's suppose this is vector u. And let's suppose this is vector v. Now, vectors have the property that you can move them anywhere in the plane because they have only been determined by their magnitude and direction. So if I look at the triangle method, what I do with the triangle method is this. I place the vectors so that my first vector, if I want to add u plus v, my first vector u, I draw it right here, I take the second vector and I attach it to the head of u. There it is. And then this vector, when I complete the triangle, is the vector u plus v. Now that is sometimes called the resultant of this uh, vector right here. We can also use what is called the parallelogram method. To do the parallelogram method, and I'll write that over here, what we want to do is we want to put both vectors so that they meet tail to tail. Okay, like this. And then we complete a parallelogram. Then the diagonal of the parallelogram is the resultant right there. Okay, so that is how you add two vectors 
using this method. Now, to see how to do this, we also need a few more ideas. We need an idea of what is called the scalar multiple. If you multiply a vector by a scalar, this is just a number, you are increasing the length of its vector by this factor and not changing its direction. Here's the vector u right here. So the vector 3 times u would be three of those. It would be like three of those right in a row there. So it would be this whole vector right here that's the same direction as u, but its magnitude is much larger. If a scalar is negative, you reverse the direction. So you can do subtraction, too. So this might be vector v, and this might be vector minus v. Now, let's take a look at an example. Given the two vectors, u and v, drawn below, I want to draw these resulting vectors, u plus v. Well, let's do that right here. I'm going to use the triangle method. I'm going to move this so that v may be about the same length right there, and u look like that, so that I attach the tail of v to the head of u, and then the resultant is just this vector right here, starting at u, ending at v, so that's u plus v. Now, if I wanted to do u minus v, and I think I will do that one using the parallelogram method, just to be a little different. And I'm going to copy u here, and copy v here. Now, if that's v, then this is minus v. Just change the direction. And if we use the parallelogram method, I would take minus v, and I would put it up here. Maybe something like that. And then I would complete a parallelogram. And then the diagonal of the parallelogram would be u plus negative v, or u minus v. So you have a few problems like these on, web on um, my math lab to help you analyze some of these things here. But it's a good idea to be able to do this. In physics class, you're often working with vectors in a geometric method. For fun, let's do the last problem, u minus 2v. I'll give you a moment to do that. You might want to pause the video and then start again when you have a moment. To see how to do u minus v, I'm going to copy u. And I'm going to copy v. Here's v. Now, I want to double the length of v. So this might be double the length of v. And I want to reverse the direction. So there we go. So minus 2v and u are my two vectors. So I'm thinking about u minus 2v as u plus negative 2v. So I'll write that down here. See if I can do that down here. I'll move my u a little. And my minus 2v, I'll try to write that right here. Might look like that. And then this diagonal, using the triangle method, might be my solution. So that is the ideas behind geometric vectors. And for a long time, that was really all that we needed. However, we have algebra. So algebra can help us solve some vector problems. So let's talk about vectors algebraically. You can deal with vectors algebraically. Consider the coordinate plane below, and I'm going to draw a vector r s right here, like this. OK, so this is the vector r s, like that. Now, this point might be x1, y1, and this point might be x2, y2. And what I want to do is I want to put it into what's called component form. Component form means I'm going to move this tail right here down to the origin. Okay, I'm going to move it to the origin. It's not too hard to see that if I move that to the origin and draw the resulting vector, that this right here, this point right here, is nothing more than x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. In other words, you're just moving this vector down y1 and over x1. So there's where the subtraction comes in. This is called the component form 
of RS, and it's given by this notation. Notice the little um, less than, greater than signs here. If the component of form of a vector is given by V equals V1, V2, then the magnitude of the vector is given by the magnitude of V, and notice this notation, that's a new notation for you, is the square root of V1 squared plus V2 squared. Now, to take a look at this, what does this mean? Well, if I have a vector in component form, what that means is that its tail is at the origin. So it might look something like this. And let's say this is the point v1, v2. You would write that vector with these little brackets here. This distance is v1, and this distance is v2. And if I want the length of this vector, it's nothing more than the Pythagorean theorem, right? So that's v1 squared plus v2 squared. And we give that the name, the magnitude of V. So there you are. So let's look at a few examples of how we would go about doing this. Let's express the vector with the initial point P and the terminal point Q in component form and determine the magnitude. And I'm going to draw the first one. Maybe that helps you just see what this looks like. So for So here's 4, negative 1. That's my point P. And Q is my point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5. Okay, so this is right there. This is PQ. Now, if I do this point was 4, negative 1, and this point was 7, 5, if I want the component form of this vector, I just subtract these. 7 minus 4 and 5 minus negative 1. And that gives me 3, 6. So let me write that down. 3, 6, right be here. So this represents this vector right here. This is 3, 6. Okay, 3, 6 and those look like they are parallel. They are the same vector. They have the same direction and the same magnitude. So this is the component form. What is the magnitude? Well, that's the square root of 3 squared plus 6 squared. Okay, 3 squared is 9, 6 squared is 36. So that's the square root of 45. I don't mind if you leave it like that, but you know how my math lab is. They probably want you to write it like this. Okay, why don't we take a moment and see if you can do this second one. You might want to pause the video, and I'll give you the answer in a moment. Okay, if you're ready, here's how I get PQ. I just subtract the x-coordinates, and I subtract the y-coordinates, and that's going to be 4, negative 1. And the magnitude of PQ, then, is the square root of 4 squared plus negative 1 squared. I believe that's the square root of 17. Okay, so this is just some basic definitions of vectors. Let's talk about adding and subtracting vectors. You know how to add and subtract vectors geometrically. So if you have them in component form, it's easy to add them and scale or multiply them algebraically. If u is u1 and u2 and v is v1 and v2, then the sum is just add the x-coordinates and add the y-coordinates. And a scalar multiple is just k times u, which is multiply each component by that. Let's take a look. So I'm going to draw a picture for this first one, see how accurate we can draw this here. Again, I apologize for not being Rudy Ganawan. But here is vector u right here. This is vector u. Vector u is negative 1, 3. And vector v is 2, negative 5. Okay, so it might be about right here. Okay, so it looks, these vectors are almost 180 degrees apart, but not quite. So vector v is 2, negative 5. Now, if I were to look at the sum of these, what algebraically we do is just add the components. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1, 
and 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So 1, negative 2, right there, might be the components. And if you, you know, if you think about this, if you were to put this vector down here, if I were to push this vector down here, it seems reasonable that this vector I've drawn completes that triangle, right? There's your triangle there, and it completes that triangle. So if you think about the triangle method, this is a pretty legitimate way to do this. Now, 2u minus v. So it's pretty easy to do this algebraically. 2 times u minus v. Okay, I usually put little arrows above them. So 2 times u minus v. I'm going to multiply by the scalar. That's minus 2, 6. And have this here. And this gives me 2 minus 2, which is minus 4. And 6 minus negative 5, which is 11. And that's my resulting answer there. This last one, the magnitude, and I should have two bars here. I'll apologize for that. The magnitude of 3u minus v. So I need to figure out 3u minus v first. So that's 3 times negative 1, 3 minus v, which is 2, negative 5. Three minus negative two is negative five. Nine minus negative five is 14. So your magnitude is none more than the square root of negative five squared plus 14 squared. So this shouldn't be very difficult mathematically for you to do this. A Couple more definitions. A unit vector is a vector with the magnitude of one. If you have a vector v, you can turn it into a unit vector by dividing it by its magnitude. So let's take an example. Negative 3, negative 4. Okay, if I draw that vector in component form, it's right here. Here's vector v right there. I'll just put v down there. Now, to find a unit vector in the same direction of v, let's check the magnitude of v. Well, the magnitude of v is the square root of negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. So that's the square root of 9 plus 16, which is 5. That is not a unit vector because the magnitude is 5. But if I take v and I divide it by the magnitude of v, that's going to take this minus 3, negative 4, and divide it by 5. And this is minus 3 fifths and minus 4 fifths. Now, if you check the magnitude of this vector, you'll notice that it is 1, which is precisely what we wanted. Now, there are two very special unit vectors, and your book is very fond of writing them in these ways. And these are those ones that lie on the coordinate axis. This unit vector right here, the one that starts at 0, 0, and goes to 1, 0, is called i. And this unit vector right here that starts at 0, 0 and goes to 0, 1 is called j. Okay, so i and j are what we have here. Now, you can write any vector you want in terms of i and j. Suppose that I have the vector over here, for example, 2, 3. There is my vector 2, 3. Now, this right here is the vector 2i. It's this vector i, but multiplied by 2. And this is the vector 3j. It is multiplied, there's j, and if you multiply it by 3, you get that. And if you complete the parallelogram, you'll notice you get this vector right here, 2, 3. So we sometimes write this 2i plus 3j. I will tell you that both of these notations are used frequently, so it's a very good idea to be familiar with both of them. But basically, you can write any vector, a, b, as a times 1, 0 plus b times 0, 1, or a, i plus b, j. All the rules of algebra apply. This makes it particularly easy. Let's take a look at this. So here's the vector u. 
u is 3i plus 5j. Now visualize your vector. That's in quadrant 1. Um, you kind of get an idea of where that is. And here's vector v, which might be minus 2i minus 3j. And that's in quadrant 3. You kind of get an idea of where that is. So what is 3u? Well, again, rules of algebra apply. This I can do just as if these were like variables. They aren't, but this is 9i plus 15j. And what is 2v? Well, 2v is 2 times negative 2i minus 3j, which is minus 4i minus 6j. So that's 2v. This is 3u. And we want to do 3u minus 2v. So we're just going to subtract. 9i minus negative 4j is 13i. 15j minus negative 6j is 21j. And there we go. So be familiar with this notation. It's used an awful lot. OK, another way to think about vectors is to use what's called the direction angle. If you have a vector v, this is the direction angle. It's the angle made with the positive x-axis, just like we always do in trigonometry. Now, if we look at this a little closely right here, if this is vector v, the length of vector v is the magnitude of v. So if this is theta, this is x, this is y. You can think about this as xi plus yj. Now, it's not too hard to see that cosine of theta is x over the magnitude of v. And sine of theta is y over the magnitude of v. So it's not too hard to see then that v can be written as the magnitude of v cosine theta i plus the magnitude of v sine theta j. So this is sometimes called the horizontal component, and this is called the vertical component. This is useful if you are given the magnitude of the vectors. For example, if I say, I am going to give you a force of 25 newtons, and I'm going to do this off in the direction of 45 degrees, this gives you a way to write down a vector very quickly. So let's look at a few examples. I want to find the horizontal and vertical components of a vector of length 30 and direction 210. All right, so your vector has length 30, or magnitude of 30. And your direction angle is 210 degrees. So OK, um, I then would say that you have, OK, the magnitude of v times cosine of 210. <gasps> 210 is a standard angle. So what is the cosine of 210? Well, it's in quadrant 3, so you know it's negative. And it's cosine of 30 degrees, so it's square root of 3 over 2. So this is minus 15 square root of 3. And the horizontal component is the square root of v sine 210. Again, standard angle, quadrant 3, sine 30 degrees. That's minus 15. So you're going to have minus 15 square root of 3 horizontal component times i minus the vertical component times j. OK, uh, sometimes in WebAssign or in my math lab, they ask you to find the direction angle given a vector. And this is a great example, but I'm going to make it a little more difficult. I'm going to put it in quadrant 3. I'm not going to do 3 plus 4. 3i plus 4j, I'm going to do negative 3i minus negative 4j. So this angle right here. Now, if you look at that, this is minus 4 and this is minus 3. So I'd like to find this angle. So that's theta equals, or tangent theta equals 4 thirds. Now, that tells you theta equals inverse tangent of 4 thirds. All right, now a week for my calculator. Now, I'm going to do this answer in degrees, but you don't have to. Look at what the problem wants. If I do it in degrees and round to the nearest tenth, 
it's 53.1 degree. However, that is not my direction angle because my direction angle would be in quadrant one and I need to be in quadrant three. So how do I solve this? I add 180 plus that. So let's do that. And that gives you 233.1 degrees. So there's my direction angle. A few last things about vectors before we quit. Okay. First of all, vectors have properties just like numbers do. You can add vectors in any order. You have the associative property. If you add the zero vector, and the zero vector looks like this. So it's just the vector that starts and ends at the origin. You end up with your original vector. And if you add a vector and it's opposite, you end up with zero. These are pretty easy to prove. Multiplication by a scalar. You can multiply by a scalar um, and you can bring the scalar out. The scalar distributes. The vector distributes over the scalar and this little multiplication rule. And these here also apply. And these are numbers, not vectors in this case. Okay, so let's finish up with an example where we can use vectors. An airplane heads due north at 400 miles an hour. Okay, so I'm going to draw this due north at 400 miles an hour. It experiences a 50 mile an hour crosswind flowing in the direction of north 30 degrees east. Okay, so I am to find, express the velocity of this vector relative to the air and the velocity of u, the wind in component form. All right, so let me start with this. Let's say I have a vector here, and it is going to be 400 miles due north. Now, if you think about a coordinate system, okay, if you think about a coordinate system x, y, I can put the vector in component form right at the origin, and a way to represent this vector is 400j. Okay, this is 0, 0,400 up here, so 400j would be a good way to represent that vector. Now, we're going to have a crosswind in the direction of north 30 degrees east. So north 30 degrees east, I'm going to draw this way. North 30 degrees east would look like this, and this would be 30 right here. Now, remember, I am looking for the velocity of the airplane. So this right here we call the vector um, u right here. And let's call this the vector w. Oh, and I can think about that. If this is 30, then this has to be 60 degrees, right? So I could say that this vector right here is the magnitude of w times the cosine of 60 degrees i plus the magnitude of w times the cosine, a uh, sine, excuse me, of 60 degrees j. Okay? Now you know the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so I can write this as the magnitude of w over 2i, and sine is square root of 3 over 2, so I can do that. Okay? Now, the velocity of the plane is relative, I want to express the velocity of the airplane relative to the air and the velocity of the wind in component form. All right, so the velocity of the plane, V, is going to be U plus W because uh, the wind is pushing this plane a little bit. If you think about it, the wind is coming up here. You know, I can move that W up here. And this is pushing this plane, so I'm looking for this velocity, V. So U is 400J, and W is magnitude of W over 2I plus the magnitude of w times the square root of 3 over 2j, okay? All right, so what is the magnitude of w? Well, the magnitude of w is 50, so I'll make that 25i, and this 25 square root of 3j. Now, if I'm doing this on the computer, they probably want me to put the i's first, and then this, kind of like this. 
and there is my velocity. So what is the true velocity of the airplane as a vector? There it is. Okay. Now, what is the true speed and direction of the airplane? The speed is the magnitude of v. So that's just doing this. And let's pull out our calculators and try to do that one. So square root 25 squared plus 400 plus 25 times the square root of 3 squared. I get that this is approximately 444 miles per hour. So the wind is pushing a little bit more to give you just a little bit more speed here. Now, what is the direction? I need this angle right here, right? If I have that angle right here, that's going to be pretty good for me. Now, this is 400. This side right here. This is 50. This side right here, we just figured out to be approximately 444. So I could use, say, law of sines or law of cosines to help me do that. So I'm going to use the law of cosines because I have these two sides and this side here. So remember, that's going to be c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. So here, this is C, this is capital C, this is A, and this is B. So that's going to be, if I do that, if I solve for cosine C, remember I can do that. Cosine C equals C squared minus A squared minus B squared over minus 2AB. So that's going to be 50 squared minus 400 squared minus 444 squared over minus 2 times 400 times 444. If I take the inverse cosine of that value, so just give me a minute to do that here, 50 squared minus 400 squared minus 444 squared divided by negative 2 times 400 times 444. Um, I get that that is just a slight angle of 3 point, say, 2 degrees. So your true direction here would be you were going true north, but now you're going north 3.2 degrees east. I hope you have found this useful. Feel, please feel free to email me if you have any questions or ask Mr. Glaze in class. Thank you.